way. <laughs> Yo, bro. And like an analogy I could give you of, of kind of what we were seeing would be if you have a if you have a tree and someone has cut into it a little bit, like you were trying to basically cut it down. That's kind of what his tibia was like. Maybe nothing ever happens, but also you know that that is there. So if something does happen, is that tree gonna tip over? Coach, um, just kind of two additions to the injury report. I think we're not kind of expecting with Graham Zussi uh, and Willie Agata. Can you give us a little bit more information on what those injuries are? I, I wasn't expecting it either. Uh, unfortunately, Willie, uh, he's going to be out quite a quite a while. He has he has a stress fracture in his tibia, um, which nobody nobody knew anything about it. You know, I, I, I probably best if I don't even make a uh, an estimation until the doctors but he's, he's actually going to have to get surgery. Yeah, we good. You're always looking at him. Look, he'll, be, he'll be looking even better every time he oh comes in. Oh my there. God, he's bro. <laughs> <sighs> what happened? What happened is, um, you know, normally when you have like, you know, simple pain and you play. So I keep playing on it, you know, but at some point I was like, ah, maybe I should just check. It's not that he's holding me, but I was like, let me just check kind of just came in randomly one day. He had mentioned it. He was like, it's just something I just want to look into. And we did. We have like the X-ray machine, you know, here in the facility. And he was like, let's do it, no problem. That was even after training, you know? And then we did it. And then he was like, um, I will talk to you after. And then it gave me scared. I was like, what happened? It's like, I will talk to you after. And once we kind of saw it, it was, yeah, it was a bit of shock because, again, we weren't expecting it. And he had essentially a fracture line and a part of his uh, tibia. And so after we did research, we spoke with, you know, other teams. We spoke with our doctors. You know, everyone was kind of recommending that we need to probably do something about this. They find out there is a big, you know, uh, stress fracture there. And then they forwarded to the doctor, you know, and then the doctor decided, like, I should come see him. And then since then, trust me. I never see my JC number again. <laughs> yeah. We were trying to determine if what you know what was the correct approach, what was the safest thing to do. You know, the, the risk was too high of that thing end up you know being catastrophic. Our, our staff and you know our doctors, everyone kind of came together with Willie, and we tried to make the right decision, and ended up being the, a surgical procedure that he ended up getting done. So the next day I came to training, he was like, oh, you're not training today. I was like, what? What do you mean you're not training? He said, yeah, you're not training and I want to check your other leg. I was like, yeah. I think there is a problem, you know? When you don't have something, like I said, in training where it's an action or where you know something happens right then and there, that's what makes it difficult, especially for him to understand, okay, why do I need to get this done? I just was training. But like we said, it was just the risk of something catastrophic happening is, which is not worth it, and he understood that. And thank God to all the medical staff, you know, they tried to advise me, they give me all my options, and then we sit together, and then we make a perfect decision, and then we go through the whole process. Once we explained everything, showed him the research, gave him the, you know, why we think this is best, he was on board, and basically, you know, the whole time through the through the process, he's been on board. So, and that's credit to him, yeah. <laughs> Bro, relax, relax. Jeez! <laughs> Why are you holding me so hard, bro? Relax! Jeez! I can't look at anyone, bro. You gotta look at her. You gotta look at her. Relax. Unfortunately, it wasn't as common as maybe an ACL or something where there's just research everywhere. There's Everyone has, has dealt with this type of injury. We kind of had to do a lot of our own research and our own meetings and discussions as a staff to try to determine how we wanted to move forward. The best thing for me is to just go through surgery. You know, I was like in shock. They sit me down, they're like, hey boy, that's not the end of the world, you know? We're here to help you, and you should know whatever you go through, we're going in this together. That's why we're here to help you. Aya! Aya! <laughs> oh my God, bro. I don't Can't believe you did this thing. I thought you loved me, bro. I, I thought this guy loved me, bro. <laughs>
like I said, there was a, it wasn't a, this is a definite, it was a, you guys definitely should, but at the end of the day, it's up to the player, it's up to, you know, the player to make the decision, so that was the harder part. For the medical staff, to be honest, I can't complain, you know, they've been, like, amazing to me. They didn't, like, you know, take decision on their own, they were like, uh, we're doing this today, and then we think it's going to be good for you, what do you think? And then, you know, I don't know nothing, and I just trust the process always, I always, like, okay agree to what they're saying and trust me, most of the decision we make together, you know. Once we got into surgery, uh, one of our doctors, Dr. Kirk McCullough, uh, he performed the surgery. I was actually lucky enough he allowed me to join him because then you can understand what he did in the surgical room and what we may need to work on after that. But obviously one of our doctors is one of, one of the best, so that, uh, that always helps. But everything went fine with surgery. Um, he came out, he came out in a good mood and uh, he was ready to, ready to get started. That's what brought us here, you know, that today we are playing and I'm so grateful for that. Not bad, huh? Yeah, not bad. The pain is there, you know. Where? Here. It took a lot of behind the scenes research to, one, understand the surgery, two, understand some timelines, and three, understand how people have been rehabbing these. Getting outlines, our staff speaking together, uh, creating what we what we assumed would be our best case scenario, our worst case scenario timeline, and then stuff in the middle. And then we basically took some of those timelines and said, listen, this is the one that we think is probably going to be about right, and kind of just began. All the time they like try to show you, you know, the big frame of it, like here is where we're going, but this is how we're going to get there. And sometimes it's difficult, you know, to like agree because. I could remember when he was telling me, hey, anything like June, July, I think you would be good, you know, to start like, you know, being on your feet. I was like, bro, with this pain, I'm having like, yeah, don't worry. Good, you know, it's a little bit fun today. It's better than staying at home, you know. <laughs> yeah, my boy, hey, you know, it's trying to keep me going. But yeah, just to keep going, you know, let's go. <laughs> Once you begin any type of rehab, there's always, like you said, benchmarks, so. Maybe we're clearing benchmarks earlier than we anticipated. Okay, that outline, if right, we, we passed A and B, we can actually move to C. We've now gained a week or whatever. And sometimes it goes the other way where he can't get over the hump of A and B, so we have to wait for C. And now maybe we've lost a week. Uh, in Willie's specific case, we didn't lose too much time at all. That early on phase, you know, you're working on range of motion, you're working on pain control, um, you're trying to get him, you know, understanding what the process will look like. I remember when I was struggling, you know, to just fire the muscles again back, and I couldn't even do that, you know. And then when things started to go as normal, like you see the muscles pumping again, and then they were like, bro, you're going back. I was like, how can I do that again? I know what I go through in these last 10 days. Anytime you're in these long-term rehabs, it's taxing, right? Physically and, and mentally. It was amazing, his response. Obviously, he's upset and he's and, and sad. Who wouldn't be? But he didn't dwell on it much. He said, okay, if this is what we need to do, let's, let's, it's go time and let's attack it head on and I'll be ready to go basically every day. Thank God, you know, for Dr. McCullough, you know, with his experience, you know, he, he tried, you know, to just do his best there, yeah, and I'm, I'm going to stay, like, grateful to him always. God has been using him, you know, and then I pray, like, God will give him more wisdom and understanding to keep helping people, you know. The stitches are removed, the wound is good, uh, his range of motion comes back, and once those three things are kind of passed, now you start working on the strength piece, and you can do that quickly because of the type of surgery he had, a way to I guess explain that would be when you do an ACL, you're, you have to worry about the new ligament within. So you have to be very specific what you're choosing. And sometimes that makes it take a little longer to do some like strength type of training. Sometimes he get mad because sometimes I feel some pain that he's not expected you know, to feel at the moment because he's like a little bit emotional. Like you can tell when he's happy, happy. Enjoy, enjoy a good day. Enjoy a good day. She knows. Things with surgery you can never tell, you know. When you just go through it, like, you just have to cross your finger and then keep praying to God because anything can happen. With Willie, in this type of surgery, you're able to, 
to hit some of those strength measures a lot quicker based on it being his bone and because that rod is within. So that did help us in those early stages, keeping his strength on top of Willie is a beast. <laughs> He just is super strong, um, which also helped, you know, we weren't sure he would be able to do this yet. And for day one, you're like, oh, wow, he's beyond us. You know, we need to find something else to, to, you know, to make it harder for him or to progress him a little quicker because this is just too easy. The thing I always understand is it's just one way to do things. You know, what will happen will happen. So. It's either you stay happy or you stay sad, you know. So, and I choose to be happy always, you know. I don't want to be sad, you know. Okay, so wraps up a little bit. That's always the, the million dollar question, right? Is, is how do you get the load in correctly? I think the best way to answer it is we, we sit, we chat with each other daily. Someone is individually working with Willie pretty much every single day. Like maybe Chris is like, hey, these were two great days. This day we may need to lower some of his loading so that he doesn't have anything happen. Oh <laughs>
when they say Joey, you know, you, you know it's about to, you know, go down, you know. <laughs> got a big day today. Really? Yeah. yeah. Don't get me nervous. This though, is all for you? No! Yes. This is for the team, man. This is all for you? <laughs> oh, Jesus. This guy is always, you know, on the top, you know, top intensive, like, but working with Joey makes me feel like, yeah, it's almost time, you know. Okay, now that, but take that. Yeah, quick, drive, 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 drive. Yes, yes, drive, drive, drive. Good. That's kind of the idea. So I was really excited to start working with Joey, even though it was a little bit, you know, uh, intensive for me, you know, like from the injury, you know, proceeding to Joey, you know. Being outside, you know, always you need to like work on your lungs and stuff, you know, but it's a good one, you know. Good one. I love it. It's burning, but it's a good one. He always makes sure like, you know, like all the movement and stuff, you know, you're good before you can proceed with the team. And that is that is so exciting. I don't want to call it difficult. It was exciting, but like, with him, like, it's about reaction, you know. Like, you need to start, you know, going crazy, you know, in the training and stuff. You know. Don't act so tough, you know. That picture, you're going to be asking them if you can put on your Instagram for sure. <laughs> Which one? Do the I? resisted sprinting one of you. Oh, my God. You're, you told me that this morning. You said, I hope they give me a good picture. He, he didn't need to put that. Okay. So we do four reps here. He always tell me to bring my ball to water next to him so that we go again. You, know? you say I try to take extra. This is Joey, you know, and then I love that, you know, this is like someone trying to get you to where you should be, you know. Drive, drive, just drive. No, 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 stop, 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 stop. And then as they're returning back into training, that's when the coaches really take a take a one-on-one -on -one approach. And I don't know if you were out there, you've probably seen Peter starting to do some of the shooting drills with them. And yeah, again, that all just kind of comes from, you know, from the whole process together, um, everyone kind of doing their, their piece to get him in the best position to return at a, at a very high level and also at a very safe level. Mara! That's all. The good section with the coach, yeah? He's trying to kill me, but let's go a couple of goals, dude. Don't tell him I said that. Yeah? He knows what these trainings are going to look like. He has the metrics, so he's saying, Willie's hitting these metrics. You know, he's definitely going to be able to do this part of training, which he can then tell the coaching staff as well. And once Willie is incorporated in modified trainings with the team, now the coaches feel like, okay, we can start to do some stuff as well because they don't feel like they can, you know, create a setback or anything for him. Wow. So I first when I heard that I'm going to be back in the lineup and first thing I called Eric, I said, Do you think this is possible? He said, Why are you asking me? Talk to Joey, I was like, bro. Like, I still can't believe, like, you and I, like, you can, like, go back to play. He was like, yeah, I think it's time. Joey was like, uh, no problem. I think the next three weeks. I said, what? What three weeks, he said. So why are you asking? You don't think you can play? I was like, I think, I think I'm good now. He said, okay, let's see what happened. But you should know, like, you need to put some work in, you know, and we want to try and make sure you're, going, you're in a good spot, you know, before you can go back to the team. I remember the day, the first day that Peter told me, uh, I think you're gonna be on the bench, you know. I was like, yes, you know. <laughs> I was so excited, you know. And then I go home, call my family, I told them, hey, I think I'm gonna be on the line of this, let's say, for real. Like, they're so excited for me, they're like, yeah, like, I'm proud of you, you know. Like, you know, it's a long process. And then they're like, you know, you know how African parents, like, we wish you all the best, you know, keep going. We don't want you to get sick again, you know. <laughs> I was like, thank you, thank you. So, yeah, it was really exciting to be honest, you know. Even being on the bench, you know, Chivas was crazy, you know. I was so happy just chilling on the bench. I'm like, yeah, you know, now I'm in the team, you know. So I'm really excited about that. Ooh, wow, wow. Uh, to be honest, it's, uh, 
it's a big moment for me. Uh, I mean, I had injury before, uh, that was 2018, but this one was like, you know, like, you know when you like, feel like, like you can't help the team like in any ways and with your, with your things and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, like you're out of the team. Like, I told you everything happened fast, like less than a week, that was when I had the surgery and everything started. Me looking back, you know, and then seeing how everything happens makes me like, you know, thank God the most, you know, like it's it cannot be like something else, you know, just God can do this, you know. And it was a big moment for me, you know, just to even step on the field, you know, it's like, oh my God, like I'm back to the field, you know, like I was just eager to just get a pass from Fonti and just return the ball to him. Just, that's all I'm looking forward to, you know. And Willie Agata, who was available for the first time following his injury last game, did not feature. He does now as he makes his return, his first appearance since the middle of April, coming back from surgery to repair a stress fracture in his left tibia. The Nigerian striker checks in for his very first action since the stop. But I feel so happy, like, even being back with the team, you know. I know at that time the game is, like, kind of over, but I go in, I just want to, like, see if I can try and do my things. Yeah, I think it's the most rewarding part of this job. It gets emotional, for sure, I think for all parties. Um, but it's just, like, pure joy when they come back, especially if they come back and have success. We're hoping for him to go out there and excel. Uh, and so, yeah, it would be amazing if he goes in the starting lineup, maybe he scores that game, like... Then go so kind, you know. They hit by, you know, bang, the ball come back again. I try, I'm like, okay, no problem, I got a bye. It's okay, you know, well done, next game. I got on his left, I got off! Denied, she strikes the underside of the crossbar and sends it. And what a return it would have been to see the ball go into the back of the net after all this time. And then another one come again, you know, and that one uh, happened to be a goal. Jonis sends his marker to the corner store. Espinosa outside of the Buda. Got off! Second effort, this time finds the net. Welcome back, Willie Agata. It's a late consolation goal for Sporting KC, but it's a welcome sight nonetheless. Watch how quickly he gets up. First to react, and he spoils the party for Toluca. Wonderful goal in the consolation variety. I don't mean a lot for Agata. Won't be much tonight in the proceedings, but a wonderful creation from Espinosa and ruthlessly finished by Willie Agata. His first goal in more than four months. We have to go back to March. And that was when I was like, oh my God, you know, it's crazy. This is like, I feel like, oh, you know, I've been missing a lot, you know, a lot, to be honest. But I'm so excited, you know. I'm back with the team now, even though we lost the game. But I'm looking forward to help the team, you know, with my little strength, you know. That for me, that's an easy answer. That, that is the best part of this job. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to that. And again, just we want him to be safe, healthy, and flying when he's out there. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully he's out there scoring some goals. It'll be, it'll be fun for everyone. I know it's not going to be easy, you know, coming back from the injury, but I will make sure, you know, I use all my power, you know, and the way Eric and everyone, you know, helped me out. In general, he, he, was, he was excellent, and, uh, and really he deserves credit for that, so I hope, I hope he does hear this part because he came in, he was always ready to go, he kept a very, very good attitude. I mean, I, I'm trying to think of another athlete I've had that hadn't had a bad day, maybe one or two in a long-term rehab. I don't think I ever came in and was like, oh, Willie's in a mood today, you know, he's in a bad mood. So we're gonna have to cheer him up or whatever. About Eric, I can describe him like a, someone that has a big heart that always wanted to see things you know, progressing. He pretty much always came in in a good mood. You know, He might have a little banter with you or goof around, but he never came in and was like, I'm not doing this today, I'm not working today. No, he came in and said, how are we gonna get a little bit better today? Uh, what do we need to do and how can I do it? We will come back together, together, me and you. We're gonna be in the team again, we have there. Yeah, as far as that, I have, I have no idea what else you guys need. Um, other than he's just a beast. Like, 
complete animal. Like, I can't wait. Complete animal, animal. I ate in the gym. It was just like, all right, today we're going to start with this simple exercise. He would maybe one time be like, all right, you got to fix this, this. Oh, no, that's it. That's good. Okay, that's really good. Like, wait, wait, put the weight down. Put the weight down. What are you doing? You know? All thanks to Eric, you know, me and him were good. And then I will forever remain grateful to him, you know, because he did, you know, a lot to me and I appreciate him. Thank you for Eric, you know. Eric, thank you so much, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for, for Willie, I would just say, I'll actually I'm gonna look right in the camera. I just wanna tell him that we're all really proud of him, and I know there are days that we were pushing you, and um, you probably were like, what is up with these guys? But it was to try to make you better and to help, help you get back on the field and help the team. So, uh, but we were super proud of you, dude. I appreciate your attitude. I know everyone else does as well. So, thanks, good work. Let's score some goals, and hopefully we win the MLS Cup. I appreciate it like 100 percent with everything because at some time i was feeling like he's overdoing you know like he's too much you know doing good to me you know yeah he, he was having a wedding i remember he called me on the wedding he was like hey bro. and he was the best guy you know like next to the next to the guy getting married you know? he's like yo guy what's up i just called you to just say hello are you good like bro you first time in me bro in the wedding just have fun he was like no i want to make sure like you're good you know when he did go home uh, with his family so obviously his family's what, 14 hours, 15 hours flight away. His family knows he has surgery, you know, they, they haven't seen him or anything. They don't, they have, really have no clue. Going home makes me feel like, you know, uh, boy, it's okay, just come back, you know. And then they're so worried, you know, because, you know, back home, like, people don't have, like, much experience about this injury and stuff. So when they hear injury or you tell them a little about that, like, there's a road in my leg, ah. So they see me walking without crutches, they were like, ah. I thought you're dying. I'm like, no, no, I'm not dying actually. I'm here, like, I'm okay. It was really cool. They, uh, when he was about to leave, they called me on his phone and they were just like, you know, thank you so much. Like, we see, we see the pictures he has, like the progress. My dad was like, hey, God bless you, God bless you. He was shy, you know, you know like, God bless you, thank you so much. And Eddie was laughing, you know. So that was just so cool. I've never had that happen where they were just handing the phone from like, here's his dad, like, Here's uh, here's the mom. Here's his best friend. Here's and it was so cool. They were just like, we see the progress. <laughs> like he's gonna come back. He's gonna be amazing. So thank you, thank you so much. So that that was like a completely different, rewarding experience that I had never had. Um, and really, it was for for the whole staff. I just happened to be the one that got the call. I learned to appreciate so many things. You know, as I told you, like what happened to me was like shock. You know, at some point I was like, I don't want to do this. Like, I, it's just a simple pain. It's not something that is holding me. But I, they seen so many people that you know lost their career because they didn't take the better decision. You know, but you know I don't want to do that. So I was like, you guys should help me. And they're like, yeah, just go through it. It's gonna take you like a couple of months, and then you'll be back doing your thing. You know. So yeah, that that helps me. You know, to understand you know, how to, how to listen sometimes. You know and how to trust people that, you know, your heart go with. It was easy to work with this guy, plus, uh, yeah, so strong and funny. <laughs> I want to say thanks to everyone, you know, because I know everyone is busy all over the world, but trust me, I receive love from everywhere, you know. Shout out to my agent, my dad, my mom, my friends, all the boys in the team, you know, but my words cannot, like, appreciate them, you know, the way I want to, but I just want them to understand that whatever like we go through together, I really appreciate it deep from my heart, you know. We've talked about the past the entire time. Mm -hmm. You know, the season's not over yet. Yeah. We're back and playing. Right. What are you most looking forward to now going forward? Oh, looking forward to keep scoring goals, you know, as usual. <laughs> Everyone team is back now, you know. Goalkeeper and me I'm back also, so at least we have extra sub, you know, in the bench. <laughs> So hopefully we can be able, you know, to take the team to where it should be, you know what I'm saying? And help the team, you know, in any way I could, you know, outside the field, in the field, anywhere, you know, and that's just the mission right now. And then we see how it goes, you know, after that. Yeah. <laughs>